Triangle inequality theorem tells us is that any two sides in a triangle have to be greater than the third side. So when you add any two sides together, they have to be more than the third. If they're not, you would get a scenario like this, where for, say for example, if this was four, and this was five, and this is 10. See, even if you were to rotate these sides down, they're not gonna be long enough to span that distance of 10 units, right? So any two sides have to actually be greater. If we had a triangle like this, where this is four, and say this is seven, and this is 10, now you can see four plus seven is 11, that's greater than 10. So any of the two sides, the sum of the two sides has to be more than the third side. So I'll show you how to do this in this problem. What you would do in this algebraic example is you would take any two sides, say for example, uh, 2x plus one plus 4x minus seven has to be greater than the third side, which is x plus one. But we also have to take into account that 2x plus one plus x plus one, those two sides have to be greater than four x minus seven. And also we have four uh, x minus seven plus x plus one has to be greater than two x plus one. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna solve these three inequalities separately and then we're gonna take a look at the solutions on the number line to find out what the possible values of x are in order to make this a true triangle. So a possible triangle that you can draw. So let's go ahead and solve this. 2x plus 4x is 6x. Positive one and negative seven is negative six. And here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract x from both sides, so that's gonna give you five x. I'm gonna add six to both sides, that's gonna give us seven. And if we divide both sides by five, you can see that x is gonna be greater than seven fifths. So that's one uh, constraint. Now over here we're gonna solve, this gives us three x. One plus one is two. Here if I, uh, let's see, subtract 4x, that's gonna be negative 1x. If I subtract two from both sides, that's gonna give us negative nine. If I divide both sides by negative one, whenever you multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, the inequality sign flips or changes direction. And then the third inequality, we have 4x plus 1x is 5x, negative seven and positive one is negative six. Here if I subtract 2x from both sides, we get 3x. And if I add six to both sides, we get seven. And if I divide both sides by three to get x by itself, we have x is greater than seven thirds. So I think that part you're probably pretty familiar with, but this part here is what tricks students a little bit. What you wanna do is you want to plot these on the number line from lowest to greatest. So the smallest number here looks like it's gonna be uh, seven fifths. Okay, seven fifths is like uh, one and two fifths. Let's see, the next largest is gonna be seven thirds, which is actually like, two and one third. So that's gonna be right about here, let's just say seven thirds. And then over here, nine is the largest, so that's nine. Okay, so we want x to be greater than seven fifths. So greater than means to the right. We want it to be greater than seven thirds, okay? And we want x to be less than nine. Okay, so now that we've graphed all three of those on the number line, what you wanna look for is that overlapping region. So here you can see, if you're over here between seven fifths and seven thirds, you know, two of the constraints are satisfied, but not this third constraint, et cetera. So what you wanna do is look at where they're overlapping. So you can see they're overlapping right here in this region in between seven thirds and nine. So as long as X is greater than seven thirds and at the same time less than nine, basically sandwiched in between seven thirds and nine, then this is gonna actually be a triangle that you can, you can draw, meaning that any two sides will add up to more than the third side. We won't have a situation here where there's a gap, etc. So great job. If you're new to the channel and you like my teaching style, I'll have a link below in the description for an organized list of videos by math subject, like algebra, algebra two, pre-calculus, et cetera, also by chapter, so covering similar topics. So if you're interested, go ahead and check that link down below. Otherwise, subscribe to the channel and I'll look forward to seeing you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.